This is a Wi-Fi Transcend SD card with 16 gigabytes of flash. That means it also has a wireless chipset and an arm running at around 500 megahertz. That's pretty cool, but kind of boring since you can't really, you know, get access to anything from inside of there. Sure, you could power it on, but what can you do? Well, I can do more. Over here, I have a little motherboard, so to speak, with a little AVR on it that can speak the 4-bit protocol that this card needs to talk. And I have hooked up to it this little I2C controlled uh, 8x8 array. Um, I could post the designs to this sometime if people want. It just makes it so you can access these little 8x8 things through an I2C uh, interface. So if I take this, the SD card, which ordinarily you'd have to like crack it open and do all sorts of crazy things to get any kind of interface to the outside with. Well, you can just take it, even if I hadn't done that, plug it in, and on this board, I have the little AVR, I have a programming header, I have the I2C header. It could just take 5 volts, but I have it configured to do debugging output. And it's all good. And over here, I'm going to be doing the debugging output through the little uh, tiny ISP programmer. And uh, let's see, let's plug it in. And you can see that it wakes up and it has one code, but that's not really a useful one. And I'm going to run tiny ISP term. And it's getting it set up. Ooh, that's not good. Let's try that again. Replug, tiny ISP term. There we go. I think I waited too long to, to run the terminal and bad things happened. And you can see that it found a few partitions, two of them, and the second one is at 1DE0000. And now it's just polling that partition for any changes. Because we're hooked into the board and we're talking the 4-bit protocol, we can now look at the same flash space as the Linux computer running inside the card does. So uh, let's do this one more time. I'm going to unplug, replug, and run it. You can see here that the codes change on this, showing that, ah, okay, it's at different stages. And this would be if it didn't have uh, the debugging terminal plugged in and just had power. Until now, it says F0. And that's the code for waiting for more commands. Now, the commands aren't going to come from the AVR or from the computer. Instead, they're going to come from the little SD card right there. Now, it's actually going to be doing this by when it wakes up running autoexec.bat. By the way, thank you so much, Transcend, for giving us autoexec.bat. This card is really awesome. Right here now, we can see that it has sent it a command. Let's take a look at what that command looks like. Back here at my computer, I'm going to have to go cycle through wireless. Okay. And in just a moment, Wi-Fi SD, yep, there it is, it just appeared. I have to connect twice, I don't really know why. And... No whammy, no whammy, hey, there we go, okay. I'm going to connect in. Right now I'm running uh, Dimitri's uh, Grind Grindbergs, Grindbergs uh, his, his Linux version of this. And uh, he has his own little password for that. I actually kind of like his version. It's kind of nice. I'm going to paste it in. And now I'm SSH'd wirelessly into this little SD card here, which is on the AVR. Now let's take a look at how I made just that second row light up. And if you can't see it very clearly, it's, it's lit up a um, kind of orange, white, orange, white, orange, white, orange, white, and just back and forth like that. So over here in the, uh, in the MNT slash SD folder, I can see a number of files, one of which is auto, auto run.sh, cat auto run.sh. And the very first thing it does is echo AA saying, hey, I actually want to send something to, you know, and you know, go, AVR, listen. 1B, which means I want to send on the first uh, I2C squared line, which there's only one I2C squared bus here. 00, zero all addresses, 9, 9 bytes to send, 00, zero to receive, started address 48, which is right here. That's 40, 48, 50, 58, hex, of course and send alternating 10101010101010 and then terminating with an FF. And that's how that little thing there lit up. There's also bidirectionality, which I'm not really showing off here,
but this allows you to expose I.O. from the little, uh, little SD card to any other kind of peripherals that you have outside. I also have a little demo here, uh, I think it's a I2C test, yeah, right there. And this one, when it finally wakes up, it starts writing to the same partition, but much more complicated things. So you can see here, it's actually uh, kind of doing this uh, like strange pattern. Now, this process isn't very reliable still. There's a lot to have left to do that we need to kind of shake out. But um, I'm hoping to get other people interested and uh, get some other people's help in trying to improve this project. I have all of my source code and designs available at the, the link at the bottom. And I uh, hope you guys liked it. If you did, please comment and hope to hear back from you. And if I do anything more with this, I'll be posting about it. Thanks. Bye.